came here in 1994 and started building this place. Uh, back then it was strictly a cow-calf outfit and we did some farming and uh, it's kind of gone through a transition over the years. We completely got out of farming and got ourselves uh, where we were 100% grazing. All we had at that point in time, the boys and I had uh, a couple of a horse trailer and a couple of horses and lots of cows and, and then it's kind of progressed from there. We uh, found a need that we wanted to feed our cattle and uh, so then we kind of started feeding them outdoors and then ultimately wound up building this uh, confinement facility and, and continued to build from there and now we're back into the farming business as well. Uh, we got pigs up on the north end of the ranch and, and, uh, and we use that manure from both this cattle confinement facility and that hog, de hog deals to uh, fertilize our pastures and, and our row crop ground. Well, on this operation, my, uh, my whole family's here. My wife and I uh, uh, live just right here, just south of the feed yard. Uh, my oldest son, Nate, and his, his wife and family, they live over on the, on, uh, the south end of the ranch. Uh, Drew and his family lives at the north end of the ranch. Uh, my daughter, Katie, and her family live up on the north end. And my nephew, Brett, lives over here on the west side of the feed yard. So we're all, you know, we're all right here, and uh, everybody's got their outpost on one end of the ranch or the other. Uh, to make room for the kids, it's just it's real simple. You just keep growing, and uh, we've been growing since I don't know. Then we weren't when we weren't in a growth mode all the time that uh, you know the kids were growing up. We were farming and and had an opportunity and have looked for opportunities. And fortunately, we've been blessed to, to wander into this place and and have been working here for 20 years. My you know my kids grew up here and now. Uh, they've got families of their own and those kids are having the opportunity to uh, come out and experience farm and ranch life and, and we continue to, to do that and, 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 and push them in directions where they have their own operations as well and continue to do that and hopefully then you know they're, they're my grandchildren will have that same opportunity and we just look for ways to expand you know we add uh, more feeding capacity and, uh, and added the row crops and uh, so we, we've got stuff going on that, and everybody can find a niche you know and uh, Hopefully they'll, they'll take that opportunity, and they have, and uh, grab that and, and go with it. You know, here on the ranch is, you know, we can feed about 5,000 head at a time. We're looking to have enough cows to keep this place full. And that, that takes a lot of cows, and that's, you know, that's how we wound up with a ranch in South Georgia as well. You know, we, we, we had about as many cows as we could hold on this place, so we look for opportunities to partner with other folks in, a, in other locales and give them the opportunity then to participate as well. Uh, and so that's how we wind up with, you know, cows around the different places in the country. But if we're going to really, truly market uh, the genetics that we're putting money into, and probably most important, the health uh, and the... Uh, the management of those cattle so that we know when they come here uh, that they're right. Uh, that's kind of how we do it. We want to have our hands on those cattle from birth all the way through and uh, we can guarantee that we're going to have a product that we can be proud of and one that doesn't give us a lot of trouble when they wind up here at the feed yard. You know, if we can get the health under control then we've really dealt with that and, and it seems to be working pretty good. Well, you know, honestly, I've been, I've been exposed to, uh, you know, a lot of cattle feeders in my experience through NCBA and stuff, and, and I've always felt that the feeding industry kind of left Illinois 30, 40 years ago and headed west and south, you know, where it was drier, and we have our challenges to deal with, you know, with the wet weather, but this is where corn has grown. We've got more feedstuffs around us between corn and, and the ethanol byproducts and, and those opportunities. And I, I've always felt that this would be the cheapest place, you know, and the most efficient place to feed cattle. But you've got to deal with the, wet, with the winter weather. And, and uh, you know, we've, lots of producers have put a lot of cattle indoors here. And uh, we can be as, a, as effective and as efficient as anybody else. And, and I really kind of feel the, the, the tide changing and, and cattle feeding coming back to the Midwest where corn has grown. I enjoy feeding cattle here because uh, we do have opportunities and we don't have the margins and the basis that they've got for feedstuffs other places, you know, and so I, I think we can be competitive and we continue to be that way. This part, you know, our cow herd's all Angus based. You'll see some colored cattle. 
that certain photographers love to pick, photograph, but most of them are going to be uh, black cows, and uh, we'll use black bulls on some of them if we're going to keep them back for breeding stock. Uh, but our terminal cross, you know, will be we typically use Charlet bulls or some Simmental, black Simmental bulls as well uh, on those cows that we're not going to keep back. Well, anything that doesn't make it as breeding stock winds up being a feeder animal, you know, so with the exception of just a handful of, of bull calves that we will keep around to use for bulls, uh, you know, all the steers go in there, all the heifers get a first, they'll all get a shot. Everybody's got a shot, you know, to be breeding stock here. And uh, we go through in the spring and, and select those heifers out that are fit to be made into cows. You know, I've always had a saying, you know, we just breed them all and let God sort them out. And uh, to some extent, that's kind of what we do. You know, the, our, our pressure is pretty intense. You know, if you don't breed or you don't breed back, you don't raise a calf, uh, especially on that very front end, we can turn those into feeders and get rid of those cows. And, and uh, we'll do that. Hopefully then we're, you know, trying to build as fast as we can. But you, you, don't, you don't get an opportunity for a second strike, you only get one and you're gone. This is the best part of it, you go out, you know, you know, you, you got to stay all night, you know, you wake up in the morning and you hear cows out your bedroom window, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, we wake up with cows and go to bed with cows, you know, especially we're calving this set of heifers right now and, uh, you know, twice a day, first thing in the morning and last thing at night, so, you know, that's what we see, so it, it's really nice. It's a, it's a bothersome thing in the middle of the night when you hear cows bawling, you're trying to figure out, uh-oh, what's up, you know, but uh, it, it, it's really great. We like living out here and, and uh, being involved with it and it's uh, really been a good place for us to raise our family.